wide angle shot to start the sequence. Hello everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave. This is the first time I'm speaking today. So my voice seems a little lower. Good morning, everybody. How are you, my brothers and sisters? Um, hi everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave. Uh, Eagle-eyed viewers may have already some, why do I always say this? Like as if you're watching without having read the title of the video you're watching. Okay. Alien's helmet, that's what we're making today. I've got all the constituent parts of an alien's helmet. And <clears throat> I wanna tell you, there's a lot of parts to an alien helmet. Uh, a friend of mine laid some of these parts on me. Another friend uh, completed the set. I got a real microphone. Uh, I already had a real lens. I got a great camera body from original casting. I've got a lovely fiberglass casting of the correct ear cup. I've got the liner and I've got the helmet. Um, I have to work out, I have to work out how the ear cup connects to the helmet. And then I will have the alien helmet of my dreams. Yes, this is, oh right, I've got the, uh, the armor on the back too. The castings on this armor are really nice. Um, I will be repainting absolutely everything. Um, but once I'm done repainting everything, so that's actually gonna be the thing. Um, the camouflage is a key part of this costume and camouflage is hard to get right. It's just, it just is. Uh, it takes a kind of um, a mindset I haven't, I haven't done it in a long, 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 long time. So uh, there's gonna be some parts prep, some part fixing, some problem solving, and hopefully by the end of the day, we end up with a goodly weathered, beaten up alien's helmet that Newt would be happy to wear while hanging out with all the adults who are probably not enough to keep her from getting killed. That was really dark. That's not what I mean. That's not exactly what I mean. I just mean that like Newt knows where the power lies and she's like, yeah, no, I'd rather fend for myself. I love that about her. Mm. Okay, so um, where shall we begin? I think <clears throat> the first place I wanna begin is this ear cup is pretty good except for a little bit of a repair there and some sanding. I just wanna clean up this casting before I start to worry about attaching the ear cup to it. And uh, then we'll start working on, once I get, okay, so there's this, then the, that attaches to the outside of it. The microphone goes to the inside of it. And to be fair, I'm not sure how I get this microphone to work through here, but we'll see. Yeah, let's get into it. All right, so here's where I'm gonna, here's where I'm gonna start. I've got the correct ear cup. It's a light, it's a nice casting. It's in good shape. Uh, I've got a little chippy chip here that I want to take care of. I know no one's really going to care about these details, but I do. So I'm going to sand down that and use a little CA glue to build that up, sand this down, get a coat of gray primer on it, and then start to worry about how the microphone fits in here because I, 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 One of the things about casting sometimes is that they'll have little bits of flash and the flash, the little, the little lip parts, they actually do a lot to take away the impression that this was a manufactured product. They draw my eye very quickly. You wanna sand and not damage ancillary details. The most surprising thing that I had to learn about sanding was this. That when you really, really cared about the details, it was like one pass with the sander. It's just, it's so much less than you think. All right, see, I got another little lip here. Uh, 
Um, the other thing I don't want to lose too much of is the um, the cup has a texture on it, and I want to keep that texture. I don't want to sand it away. Right now, I'm just kind of going through and looking for any parts where the curves don't really feel like a like a they don't feel right, and I'm straightening them out. This is just a way of kind of making it. You know, finishing out the storytelling that it's a manufactured part instead of a cast part. All right. All right. Let's get some CA glue in there. Fix it up. In building up a detail like this with CA glue, it just takes a little patience. Just like two or three passes of letting the glue settle into a sandable structure. This thing I don't think needs any work at all. The hinge pin is good. I guess it could use a little sanding. All that crazy glue is drying. I'll give this a little bit of a cursory pass. Yeah, because the, um, the texture of the camouflage, something that I don't need here. Also, if there are if there are big irregularities in here, I much of this, but much of the parts of this helmet are cast off of a screen used. Um, so I don't want to remove too much of the crunchy detail because they were in the thing. I just want to remove the texture of the camouflage so it doesn't un show underneath my camouflage paint job. might be the, the last pass I need to do. I'm working on the lens right now. Um, one of the best way, this is the lens body. This is the camera body. Um, it's a casting, I believe from screen lineage. Uh, I got a real lens and the real lens bayonets right in here. It's really quite awesome. Um, I may add a, uh, a keeper screw or something like that. Um, but I want to do two things to this camera body. I want to get rid of these little screw heads and replace them with real, correctly sized 256 screw heads. <clears throat> Replacing screw heads is one of the fastest ways to make a prop look way better. I'm also going to chuck this into my mill and get rid of some of this crap. Um, I don't need it all. And every little bit of weight helps. This is already a steel bucket and it's heavy. And I just like to remove a little bit of the weight if I can. Yeah, all right, so let's remove these screws. First, I'm gonna drill through the center of each one and that will be my guide for where the new ones actually go. I'm using a 256 uh, tap drill. I'm just going through the center. I'm just drilling right through the center of each of the screws. I'm using it as my positioner. And uh, since each screw is clearly perpendicular to the, to the curved base, I'm making sure to drill my holes accordingly. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> now we can start to get rid of these. I'm going to do a little clippy clip first with the flush cutters, and that takes care of most of it. Camera body painted clearly with brown bess. I will be giving it another coating of that. 256 tap. I'm going to come up through the bottom of each one of these.
Sometimes this the machine bolt will protest it. But it will find its way as it did. All right, I'm just going to take these little nubbins down on my belt sander. There is the camera body. I have I used a Forstner bit to pull some of the weight out here. Um, I refined its uh, I refined its profile against the helmet. There, it's uh, it's better than it was, so I'm glad about that. Uh, yeah, I just need to put a. I just want to put a little keeper in here, but I don't see that I have the room. Hmm. Maybe I'll just have to put a little bit of Loctite in there or something. All right. My uh, little glue border here on the ear cup has set. So now I'm going to glue it in place. Now with something like this, where I want it to have a lot of strength, because I want this, this will hold on to my ear cup, it'll be my little thing. I'm gonna let this set and then I'm gonna put a little crazy glue gusset on the inside. That'll just give me a little more security about how strong it is. And I guess I can put away so oh, that is a little bit of CA glue on the inside. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. See that? Yeah. Oh, I get to send that. This is the crazy glue fix, and I'm just using my X-Acto blade to add in texture to try and bridge the texture between the, the body of this uh, ear cup and the crazy glue that I just went over. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. There, that's a nice join. Texturally consistent. I still can get rid of a little bit of a shadow there. Yeah. Okay, I have pulled apart this microphone. It's a lovely little ribbon element. Uh, and this is simply a brass tube. So I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to put in a filler brass tube that joins these two. And I'm going to join it in this thing. Yeah. Am I going to do that or am I going to thread it? I might thread it. That might make the best sense is to actually thread it. Then I can make it a lock and then I can install it and uninstall it. Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I don't ever need this to have a real microphone. It doesn't need to be real. Uh, not enough meat to actually do a thread, but I put in this brass rod and I've glued it in using thin crazy glue up to here. And then this one will come on here like that, and that will be grabbed. So hopefully it looks like this. All right, this is great. Um, here is my microphone with half of its, with half of, uh, it's, it's, it's the split in the microphone uh, tube is right where I want it to be because it's right where this is. And then the other tube slips on the back of this, and it is all a really nice, tough uh, wedge fit. So I feel really good about this so far. Um, it's exactly where I oh, want it to be. I want to figure out where this goes and how all of this uh, attaches together. Then I can start worrying about how it hinges into the helmet. All right, uh, <clears throat> time for a test fit. So here's where the microphone goes through. And here is the microphone uh, position set. And so I wanna get this going out that little hole and it is a nice pressure fit. Okay. So then I wanna bring that into, yes, the clampy clamp. 
There's that. And if I tighten that, it's such a nice pressure fit. I'm really into what a pressure fit this actually is. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, great. Then I bring, so now uh, that's going all the way through this guy. So if I bring this guy in and then get it through there, and then I bring them back so that they're both being clamped at the same time. See that? Look at that. Yeah. I end up with a really nice, that is great. Okay, so now the question is, how does this work? Right, so that's got a, uh-huh, okay. So first I've got to cut this away. I don't want it to go farther than that. So it's already as low as I want it to go. What I want to do is create a little bit of a right here to accommodate for the right there. Like this. Yes, okay, so that is working. Uh, clearly I need to, yep, yep, yep. Okay, there's some other parts I have to get rid of, which are the ones covering <laughs> that and that. Oh, getting there. It's getting, it's getting. Yeah, not bad. Warren cuts again. Good. See that? That, yeah, that's definitely what I wanted. All right, um, this is great. This is coming along great. Here is the ear cup. Here's the inside. And now here is the styrene ear cup um, ear pad holder that I made. And I gave it a little bit of a relief here to accommodate that business. And I'm about to see if that Fits on there all nicely, but I think they should all play well together. Let us find out. I mean, the thing is, is it's just stretching over a obstacle and then the cloth will move over the obstacle just like the other thing does. So there it is, there's my ring and here it goes. And that's, Fantastic. I'm really, yeah, that's great. Not only that, it still can accommodate a uh, microphone if I wanted it to. I now want to create a marriage between this and this, and I think I'm going to do it with magnets, but I also need a little bit of a, of a little registration. Hmm. I might just need a little bit of a strippy poo. Strippy poo. There we go. Happy with that. So now, magnets. Ah, look at that, that actually fits. Great, okay. So I'm going to load this up with some glue. Well, actually, I'm going to give it a little tooth. Okay, so here's where we're at. This magnet sits on the back. Here's the ear cup. This magnet will mount into there. And that is a nice fit all the way around. So I'm going to load this up with a little bit of glue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that should be what I need. Let's give this some real foundation.
Okay, moment of truth. We're gonna put this on and we're gonna see if we can't get it all to play nicely together. Come on, there you go. That's it, yeah, yeah, all right, here we go. Here's the cup, here's the ear pad. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a headset, yeah, yeah. Awesome, woohoo, that is great. Awesome, and plus, here's the best part. If I want to, I can still put a mic in here and connect it all the way up. I can have an earphone in here if I want because I've got the room. Yeah, okay. Well, that was very exciting. Right, I've got the outer strap here, and now it's time to lay in these guys. Ah, uh, you know what, and I want to... <clears throat> Those two go there, and that will be a bit of camo. I think I can leave this this color. I think I'm almost done. Ah, these need to be black, that's for sure, but I'll get to those in a little bit. This, I don't want to see those, so... Great, wonderful. Okay, so now, now the next step is this guy. And this is, that's problematic. I don't like this attachment method. It's not making me happy, so I'm gonna change it. But it's still gotta be really low profile. And that's gonna wanna come in and come, I don't want it to come out, right? No, I don't. I wanna be able to, yeah. Okay, so let's remove this. And then this guy, yeah, comes in here. I have made a new hinge for the ear cup. It's made out of a piece of K&S brass, which I have uh, bent around the wire and drilled to fit this hole. And now I'm about to add this rivet, correct in size by the by, through here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna put a rivet backing plate there and then uh, hammer it through. There's the rivet. This is a soft aluminum rivet with a backing plate, the same as the others. And I'm going to uh, cut it so I don't have to work around too much material. There we go. That is great. That's a much more positive hinge. Okay, so I definitely wanna keep on securing it. Ah, good. Now, how does the liner work?
All right. Yeah. So um, another aspect of this is that I can see that the um, fiberglass liner is cut back. I was just double checking that and it is cut back from the edge. So I'm going to do the same. Yeah. Cut it away, cut it away, cut it away, cut it away now. All right. Yeah. Bellissimo. go. Uh, yeah, things escalated quickly. And I'm not just going to paint the uh, helmet. I realize here's the issue. With camouflage, most of the time with painting, there's some pretty easy rules to follow, right? Like this part is that color, that part is this color and a little masking tape and you can kind of separate them out and make them work. But with camo, this is a fine, this is fine. It's fine. It's not great. I'm going to redo it. And the thing about camo is it's meant to be not seen, right? I know that's sort of obvious, but there's also a way in which the camo should not be drawing your eye. And it is not very rule oriented. You kind of have to, you have a lack of rules. And if, you ever if you've ever complained that there were too many rules, there can also be a problem when there's a lack of rules. And like with camo, it's, it's, it can be difficult. Um, I have, however, a little bit of a guide. I recently received in trade a piece of Colonial Marine armor, not original from the film, however, built by Terry English. Built and painted by Terry English. Um, and it's real dark. It's real dark and dirty. I mean, you can see it. This is like, yeah. I'm gonna follow this as a painting guide. I'm not gonna repaint over Terry's work. Um, so I bought some antiquing black and uh, I got the Humbro, I think I got the Humbro colors I need. Um, I mean, it's even like he took a blowtorch to some of this vinyl, um, front and back even, it's great. So I realized once I procured this, which I did, it, it's been a few days since the last video. Sorry about that. Um, in the interim, I received this and was like, oh, I can't just paint the helmet. I got to do it all at once. If I'm going to do it, I got to do it right. So I have this full set of Colonial Marine armor, uh, cast off for screen used. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so. Um, yeah, I'm going to paint it all. There it is. The, the cabs are actually, the cabs are already painted. They're fiberglass. Uh, they are also cast off screen used. Um, and I think I could be wrong about that one part, but at any rate, um, the color of these calves is not entirely bad. With a little bit of semi-gloss and a little antiquing, they should be all right. Um, so I'm gonna leave the calves, but I'm gonna do everything else. It's all Marines all the time here. Okay, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna take apart the helmet so I can paint it, um, get a breath mask and some black paint so I can paint the inside of everything dark. And then I'm gonna, yeah, start the, camo. I, this may take me a couple days. I don't know. We'll see how it, we'll see, we'll see how it goes.
I think I got the right color. This is um, Rust-Oleum Camouflage. The coverage is amazing. Really, it's an amazing coverage. Bonds to plastic. And this is a uh, color 279175 Deep Forest Green. There's your QR, your PC code. Um, I think this is an excellent base. Yeah, I think it's an excellent base color. Um, if I if I look at this, the thing about the aliens uh, camo is that there is a really dark green base, and it's here and it's here, and I know it's really hard to see on camera with the shine and all that, um, but I think this is actually. Pretty freaking close to it, the dark green base that I'm looking for. Um, they don't, you know, when you're... <sighs> matching color is an inexact science, but there's lots of room to, to play. Um, don't get me wrong, I get, I've been nervous about this paint job for weeks. I've been thinking about it and pondering it in my head and like, you know, at the same time I recognize that I spray a color, take a look, hold this up. You know what? If that seems like they're in the same family, I'm in the right ballpark. I can do all sorts of adjustment later. These colors are, there's two browns, a light and a dark. There's a lighter green, so there's three other colors and I've got the humbrols. Um, yeah. It's just about continuing to hold this up and making sure it all feels like it's part of the same thing. Now, the paint's gonna dry. Oh, right. Now the question is, oh, hey, hey, hey. now the question is, will this look too light? Ah, you know what I'm also going to be doing? I'm going to be, I'm going to be hitting this with a black wash. I'm going to be toning this way, 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 way down. And the more I look at pictures of people's uh, photographs of their aliens armor, the more I notice that the armor in the movie is shiny and Really dirty and really, I mean, look at the, the amount of weathering Terry and his team do on these. Um, this is getting close, but it needs a semi-gloss and it needs a, a, another pass of a black wash. And then I think I can get it into this zone. It's also on your feet. It's not directly connected to the armor. So I, I have a little more latitude for that one. Oh, right, 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 right. I keep forgetting buckles. All right. I'm going to go out something from storage while that's drying. Okay, uh, I am now using Humbrol Matte 226 to do my light green pass. I have done a one-to-one -one mixture of it with uh, mineral spirits, and I'm about to just start to get a philosophical bead on how this should look. I'm going to start with the most prominent piece, which is the chest, and I'm just gonna... I'm not trying to copy a specific armor here, one a specific design, but as I look at them, I mean, each one is totally different, like radically different. So there's no hero cam camo I'm trying to get. It's mostly like the relationship balance between the greens and the browns and the khaki. So here we go.
think one of the things to hold in the brain while doing camo is you it's not going to look good until you're almost all the way there and you got to re recognize and resolve yourself to that fact i'm trying to be sparing with my paint because i don't have a ton of it um I think the thing that I'm noticing is that the browns are done in kind of sausage loops and the greens are more like fields. That's the kind of overall thinking I'm, you know, I'm trying to go. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm really not sure how this is going to track, how it's going to scan. God, I'm hoping this works. I'm really, I must tell you, I'm speaking like I know how this is going to turn out. And the answer is, I really don't. Like, I'm going on faith, but I'm not positive that I've chosen the right colors. I'm not positive they're going to scan the same way. Yeah, it's... Um... I mean, one of the things is, these suits are beat up. They are very um, weathered. So whatever I do here, I'm going over it with a real aggressive black wash and some dirt and uh, then a whole bunch of scraped metal treatment, right? So I'll do all sorts of molto edging on the edges of this armor so it looks real. Um, yeah, and that will, like I say, like I like to point out, that hides a lot of crimes. The other thing I'm trying to do is not be regular, right? Like the whole point of camouflage is that it doesn't catch your eye. That's why it's so hard to paint. You've got to paint something that is like a psychological trick. So if something looks too neat or a line looks too straight, it's going to it's it's going to subvert the purpose. So I'm also kind of like looking over this and sort of like I'm not only painting these pieces to each other, painting them to themselves, but I'm painting them to each other so that as I look at the whole of them, I will uh, hopefully gain insight into the proper distribution of color and form. And then after I weather it, after I paint this, then I weather it, after I weather it, I hit it with a semi-gloss. Actually, I probably hit it with a semi-gloss before I weather it. And then again, afterwards, I'm really gonna take it all, connect it all up to each other. I mean, the thing is, is when Terry does this, like you can still buy this armor, sorry. The thing is, is that when Terry makes a set of this armor, and he still does, you can still buy a set from him, I believe. Um, don't ask me about the contact information. I, 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 yeah, but, uh, you know, when he does it and he paints it up, well, I mean, one thing is, is that the paint job is beautiful because Terry's not just an amazing armor designer. He's also an incredible graphic designer and illustrator. Like the guy is a multiple threat artistically. Um, and consequently, like he's painting, each one, he's painting each one of these and, uh, He's not trying to match a perfect screen used one. He's doing it. Let's see. Yeah, let's try that. We'll try a horizontal. Um, he's following his muse on that paint job on the camo for the new armors that he makes. Just like this, right? This is this is this is what I'm taking as my guide for the color balance. I'm trying to think like Terry does as he does these guys. It looks like the coverage will be good. I'm gonna do a second coat for all of this. And that may be where I get to by the end of today. It's just two coats. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. I wanna add more to the top, but I'm resisting that urge because I don't think it needs it. Here. 
perhaps there, and perhaps a little more here. Again, I'm starting to see that like if I have a color that breaks the border, it ends up making it sort of feel like it's part of something. Yeah, I know, clearly I really like it. Okay, so uh, I have plenty of paint left. This is wonderful. Um, I'm going to uh, let that sit. Cover it over, over here. Oh, you watch Destin too? Cool, what are you watching for? The movie props, the costumes, the show and tells, the tool tips? No, no, no. I watch it for the axe and blow drying. Oh. That's the first pass, first green. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure it's the right green. Uh, 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 it's looking fine. It's just, it's like more forest green on Terry's. Feel like I can rescue that. All right. Um, now the question is, do I do a second coat of the green? And I think the answer is yes. I think these colors should be prominent before I take them back down again. They look nice and saturated here. So let's do that. I'm also trying not to do every blob the same kind of blobby blob, right? Like, ooh, whoops. You know, you want to just sort of... Humans are, we have a difficult time being random. I must say, you know, that's that's mathematically true. I think it's also aesthetically true. Well, I guess those are one and the same, right? Look, the whole thing I'm saying here is like it's not done until it's done. I suffer too. <laughs> like I, I was debating, should I do a second color and then come back and do the, do the second coats, but now it's like, in order to see how these colors really relate to each other, I have to do the second coat now and really let it set so that then I can do the browns because the browns really seem to be like some kind of camo sausage vine against a field of greens. That's the way, yeah, there's a the phrase. Second coat goes on really nice. Once that first coat has broken the back of the color variants. Second coat just makes it look like you know what you're doing. I'm pretty impressed that it seems like if you're wondering about humbrol colors to cover your alien camo, it looks like one little can of humbrol uh, thinned one-to-one -one with mineral spirits is plenty to actually do a, a full camo paint. That's totally, I mean, you know, with my forest green, deep forest green, parsley, sage, rosemary. Anyway, um, with my forest green base, which is more like a gray, it's often doing something like this, which is boring, but I'm just like doing it. It's often when I'm doing something like this that I feel that flow state, that like, how do I describe it? It's like the ego drops away. It's like all of a sudden you're encompassed with a task and it's hard to say, okay, so flow state suggests that there's like, slightly like less cognitive activity around what you're doing. I guess that's kind of like the, what I tended to think of it being. Um, but I'd like to suggest another way to think about it because I really do think that when we're exercising this part of our brains that plays around with narrative on multiple levels, and when we're like satisfying that curiosity we have to see if we can achieve something and to 
kind of bring something to fruition, that there's this It's very spiritually satisfying, but it's also a little disconcerting because, I don't know, I feel like the self becomes a little subsumed by the activity and you get to kind of witness from the inside what an illusion that self is. I don't know, I, that may be a little too heavy. Uh, I just, you know, every now and then, Every few months, I'm like doing something like this, and I feel like I am both the smallest thing in the room and I am also the room. And when I was much younger, that feeling was disconcerting. And as I've grown, um, I've grown to be much more fascinated by it because I recognize it as something that is important that's happening. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I know that I chase it because it, like, I learn about myself in that moment, in those, in those spaces. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is what happens when you start talking about something, but you don't really have a point to make. Good luck editing this one. I mean, maybe you just have me ramble the whole time and I, here's what I want to say. I feel like when I am in a state of working on the tedium and kind of dialing into it and I really know what I'm doing and I kind of know what each next step is, I feel connected. I feel connected to the world in a way that is deep and abiding. And that connection is, it's kind of an other. Right? Like there's a collective consciousness. I mean, you know, I think for some it's religion. I think for others it's, you know, the camaraderie of, I don't know, Hoosiers or <laughs> your fellow players or, but you know, when, when I'm, when I feel like that sort of, that connection to a continuum of humans making and telling stories, It feels magic. Because I think about like people watching this. You might have painted your own armor. You might be watching me make a mistake. And even though those two things aren't connected, like I may never, you individual who's watching this, I may never speak to you about this video, but we're having this moment together separated by time and space, but we're sharing this moment, right? That's kind of neat. Moreover, you know, in some of my videos where I say exactly what you're thinking at the right moment, <laughs> I mean, I think that's like part of that. It's one of my favorite jokes in any movie when a main character, when a character in the film says precisely what I'm thinking at any given moment. Uh, example, example, Ailey, uh, sorry. Um, the thing, when Norris, when Norris turns into the spider thing, if you haven't seen the movie, just watch it. Uh, when Norris turns into the spider thing and the other guy looks over and sees that and goes, you gotta be effing kidding me. Um, that is one of my, that's one of the funniest lines in any movie I can think of because it's precisely what I was thinking when I was watching the movie the first time and every other time since. So I'm, uh, I, I painted the, the, the blobs on the, on the hero chest piece first, but it was almost the last piece I painted the second coat because I really just wanted to see how it was going to lay on. I was gonna make my mistakes on another piece instead of this one, you know. Ah, what kind of brush am I using today? I'm using a little chisel point brush. Um, who makes this, plaid? Yeah, it's three eighths inch chisel point. Um, this is really nice for getting the edges of the lines. Um, nice and like, you know, a nice separation at the edge. 
Um, but I can see that this is going to take a while to dry, and it's Friday, and it's 4.30. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home and enjoy my weekend, and I'm going to come back next week and finish this out. I'm just leaving everything like this. The shop is particularly messy these days. It's causing me some difficulties because it's like, it's more of a tile puzzle than it's ever been before, but you know. Gets like this sometimes, it just takes a while to get back out. We'll get there. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be just like a cut for you, but for me, I'm gonna go enjoy a weekend and going to LA and I'll see you in a minute. Another day, another camo color. I tell you, camo feels high stakes. <clears throat> it's like, it's, it feels like high stakes painting. Have I already said this in this video? It's like, there are no rules and the rules are, it has to feel like there isn't a rule so it doesn't drag your eye. I'm pleased with how it's going. At each stage, I'm pleased with how it's going. And at each stage, I'm a little bit apprehensive. Uh, I'm gonna go for the darker brown now, the 160. This is the reddish brown. Uh, and now, instead of thinning my humbrol, I'm just pouring a little bit, I'm pouring a little bit of mineral spirits into the can. That's just thinning it out a little, but it allowed me to do the brown in one coat instead of two. Because I had thinned out the um, <clears throat> this uh, light green. Yeah, I had thinned out the light green one to one. So, Lauren, I mean, it's really going to be great, right? This is going to be fabulous. This is this is my paint job, right? It's not, <clears throat> that's exciting. And yeah, I guess I may have to do the legs, but once I hit everything with the black wash, I may be able to make the calves work with this. All right. We'll see. We'll see. I can't put the the pop. Maybe I should give you a different angle. One thing I'm really impressed about, maybe I've already said this in this video, I'm really happy with how well the humbrol spreads. Um, yeah, I'm it, uh, a little goes a long way and I appreciate that. five days into painting the alien marines armor and the most recent color i did was a humbrol matte 91 to do this super dark green and something went wrong um it's a matte and yet here it is a full 24 hours later it has not set which tells me that i don't think i stirred it enough uh it's on most of the pieces except funnily enough i barely did any on the front plate so we'll uh, fix that bit basically 
I'm just gonna mix this up really well. And try and fix the problem. I mean, I don't wanna have to repaint it, but I might, but I doubt it. But I might, but I doubt it. But I might, but I doubt it. I am not gonna thin it anymore. I put a little bit of uh, mineral spirits in here. As I've been doing with all the others, just to get the paint to extend a little bit. That being said, the humbrol goes a long way. Honestly, you could do this, if you had one can of humbrol for each of the colors of the armor, you could get it done. Okay. It's a universal brush technique, always wet your brush before dipping it in paint in whatever solvent is correct for the paint. So you don't want to wet your brush with water for an oil paint. For an enamel, you want to wet it down with a little mineral spirits. And that just, that just like, it keeps the paint from getting all the way into the ferrule here. That gets moisture in it and then it must, becomes much easier to clean out your brushes. Uh, all right. Oh, I didn't even do that one. All right, let's fix. I'm going away for the weekend. It's Friday right now, so I'm going to fix this and hope that when I come back, it all looks right. Wow, this paint is weird looking. I think I am going to thin it just a little more. I am. Yeah, that's the stuff. It's really important to mix your paint. How many, I, there's no, I mean, I can't say it enough. Your paint, the paint is full of all sorts of things. Binders and coloring agents and thickeners and extenders and solvents. And when your paint's been sitting for a long time, those things all sort of naturally separate out. Ah, sorry, my hearing aid's driving me nuts. Those things all naturally separate out uh, depending upon their densities and literally the force of gravity. Um, and uh, you can get into trouble. That's a weird looking paint. I hope I get this right. I hope this will work. All right, let's start small. It's definitely a better looking color than it was when I put it down the other day. Yeah, that looks much more authentic. Muy authentico. Okay, I think this will help. I think I was working with just like, I think I was, I, I stirred it up by shaking the can, but I didn't actually physically stir it. And I think that's where my mistake was. I think I was dipping mostly into solvent. And the, uh, the thicker parts of the paint were just sitting at the bottom, not getting any love from me because I was not thorough in my mixing. Better. I, would, I could actually deal with this paint being even a little thinner, but I'm, I'm loath to add more. I'm loath to add more uh, mineral spirits right now, given that the paint was being funky with me. I kind of want to be careful. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah, there's some pieces over here. Mm hmm. Well, that feels successful. We're going to continue on through. Oh, no, I already did that one. Uh, you probably saw it. Uh, let's see here. Where's this? Yeah, that's nice. I like that one all the way across. I'm going to give it a little knobby knob because I feel like it's a little too regular. Good, good. Yeah, we'll get a little bit of that. Excellent. Hopefully, the solvents in the paint I'm painting over the undried part will uh, play hopscotch with the ones that are already down there and that it'll all dry. Boy, I really hope that happens. I'd hate to have this thing never quite dry on me. I'd actually really hate to have to sand this all and redo it. That would be a boring slog. I don't like... I don't like redoing stuff. Oh, the hero. Yeah, this one. This is where it got bad. Started to drip. Yeah, see? All terrible. Here's hoping that this takes care of this problem. Ooh. Pretty 
perhaps someone in the comments can tell me what the deterioration of enamel, because right now this enamel is forming these like long polymer chains that wants to like come out with the brush. And I mean, that just tells me that they're like some of the solvents leaving or like it might not have enough solvent. But again, given that I added a little bit before, I know, I know the solution is probably to add some more mineral spirits, but reader, I'm afraid. So I'm just gonna do this and knowing that, as I said in the beginning, this paint job is gonna look like crap until it doesn't. It's gonna look wrong until it looks right. And like, once I do this part and I really let this sit, oh right, and then there's the last bit of the gray, which is the hardest part of this paint job, frankly. Let's do this, let's get just a little bit of a hint here. Ooh, yeah. Is that everything to the shows? Did I get it all? Let's see here. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's gonna be lumpy, but then when I look at the original paint job, it's also a little bit lumpy. And I feel like the split here is pretty good. I might be missing a little bit of the dark green. Maybe some here. So each time I'm looking at this, I'm sort of looking at the totality. Do I feel like there's enough balance between the colors? Do I feel like there's enough balance? And every time I feel like I have a point of view on one of them, I, I go for it. Again, you don't have to know how the thing's going to turn out. You just have to know what the next step is. God, that was a revelation the first time I realized it. What's funny is I can see... I get drips from the humbrol, and on some of the pieces of armor, I can actually see what are clearly humbrol drips. Oh, right. Whoops. Humbrol. Yep, yep, yep. I forgot. Oh, yeah. There we go. Almost forgot these parts. Yeah. Okay. In a minute, you're going to get to see the results. I, however, I'm going to dress up, go to a wedding in Healdsburg, and I'll see you on the other end. A new day, and I'm getting happier. I'm... The armor is looking great. I'm really happy with how it's looking. This is the, uh, the front of the breastplate. I'm going to add some green in here, kind of break this up. It's a little bit too regular. I think I have a couple more spots, but we are close to uh, giving this a clear coat of some matte spray. Uh, and then I think I'm actually going to actually it might not even be mad. It might be semi-gloss because I've, I don't know what this is. This is all in one paint. It's a antiquing gel oil based oil rubbed black. I don't know. I, I saw it in the window <laughs> and I couldn't resist it. I saw it on uh, Amazon and I was thinking, oh, that might be interesting to play with. A, uh, a, a um, formulated black wash for weathering might be really interesting on these because they are very weathered. They are very, very weathered. Um, yeah, so um, also, sorry, here, let's take a look at this. Uh, it's not too... Mm. So I have this issue, which is I don't want to dismantle these entirely. Because it's... It's a lot of rivets and I'm lazy. I'd rather not have to redo all these rivets. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh... I may take the um, my light green here and I may add it to this. And then when I do, this is the next step, sorry, this white, the light gray. And this, I feel like the hardest part of this paint job to get right because the way Terry English did it, um, it very much felt like smoky little tendrils. 
And while this paint job isn't bad at all, these just, they draw my eye and I, I don't want them to. Um, and there's multiple crime hiding steps, right? So once I get the, once I feel like I've got the color balance across these pieces, then it's time to add the, uh, the white tendrils. Then it's time to add a semi-gloss clear coat, then a black wash, then the aluminum, the scraped aluminum, right? So every edge uh, should end up looking like this, which is real aluminum. And like, you know, we've got this, yeah, we got this issue all around. That's what the armor did in the movie. <clears throat> it's a Sunday, but I figured I'd come in anyway. I'm kind of excited about getting this off my bench. I've been thinking about the camo so long. I'm really pleased that the um, the dark green dried and it's a great value. It's a great value. It's, I'm really, okay. I think I've talked enough. Let's do some painting and. I think it's a reasonable time to stop and give you guys an accounting of the colors and we'll hopefully have these in the comments below. Uh, the base color is Rust-Oleum Camouflage 2X Cover. This is uh, color number 279175 Deep Forest Green. Deep forest cream, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. The other colors are all Humbral matte enamel colors, and they are the following. The dark green is 91. The light green is 226. The khaki is 29. The red is 160. And the gray, which isn't on here yet, is 64. Those aren't, I don't take those as canon. That's not, I haven't like cracked the secret. Different people have different colors that they use for their armors. These are the ones that I felt balanced and hit the notes that I was hoping for. My guess is going to be that there were variances across the original costumes from what I can see. Uh, but those were the colors I chose for my armor. Uh, and we're just about to do the gray. Every... <laughs> Even though it's going really well, even though I am like super happy with how this is looking. The gray is, I'm scared. I'm scared of the gray. Like every stage has been a little bit fraught. All right. There we go. Okay. Hey there. Uh, we did a live stream this week, and during the live stream, I took the steps of starting the last set of uh, colors for my Colonial Marines armor. I'm pleased, and uh, yeah, we have some shots from that for B-roll, the Gunther shot, and I'm about to jump back in and complete this stuff. Hopefully, this is the last painting step before I do the weathering. I'm very excited.
right, I have just completed the master for the military stencil, which goes here on the front of the chest and here on the back of the helmet, if I remember correctly. I'm gonna do some cutting out. There we go. Um, I have come to the conclusion over the years that um, one could certainly have a Cricut cutter or a laser cutter and do stencils. We did these at ILM all the time. We made custom painting stencils and vinyl sticker stencils, et cetera. But for like one-offs where it's just a title, just hand cut it. Honestly, that entire procedure took me, what, the length of a song? Yeah, just cut out the one-off, it's faster. Uh, That one, and oh, gotta look this one up. <clears throat> okay, oh, 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 don't you fall on me. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> oh yeah, looks great. Very happy. All right. So now I'm about to hit this all with a semi gloss. Put on the mask for that. That. So I used a golden semi-gloss archival finish. I really like the way it wets out. Boy, it ties this thing together. It's looking pretty good. I mean, ultimately, what I'm trying to do is make something that works for itself. Look at how well that, yeah, that just feels much more like the movie armor to me. I know I might not have the colors of this exactly correct um, or exactly to the same as everybody else agrees, but right now it's feeling like I've got the thing I set out to get. So I'm gonna let this dry and then it's time for, once this semi-gloss dries, that's the finish of the, that's, that means I'm done with the paint job. Then it's time to assemble it and only once it's assembled do I then go in and do the weathering. That's the next step. saw this mistake happen, but I just put the four front connectors on the back. I thought I was halfway done, but I'm not. I'm a little sad about this. 
Nothing to be done but drill them out. Nothing to be done. Must drill it out. Which is too late. I've already seen it. Um, all right, let's see here. I just got sweaty. Yeah, I mean, it could have also just gotten hot. But I also think there's a little bit of the emotional activation of messing up. These guys are really confusing to me. Really confusing to me. There are many, many different arrangements that are possible with these armor pieces. I don't need to heat that up yet. Um, there are many different... There are many different ways to make these pieces connect to each other. And getting it right is tricky. I think I'm gonna go, yeah, I think just like that. Great. Okay, uh, so there's that, but I need to know if I can get an even longer one. Are there any super long ones in here? I don't think so. So I need to grind away. Do I? Or could I just get away with doing that? God, I might. I might. Let's see if I can. Great. So if that goes, okay, then I gotta try the other one. Which isn't quite as thick, which is great. So I've cut all the straps on each of these pieces super long so that I have options in case I wanna extend any of the pieces of this. Okay, so that is where those get to. And that is, yeah, that is, that sits there like that, comes down here and connects to that. So that is definitely true, right? Yes. Starting to make some sense. It looks like it closes on the left side and opens on the right. So the left side is a permanent join up here, but the right side is not. I think that's what I've sort of surmised so far. Uh, let's get these guys going through here. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. And let's get these guys. And I am going to stop using this rivet hand riveter because it angers me. And I'm going to use the air riveter. Now these guys are starting to look pretty okay. 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 That makes sense. Let's get this left one correct. Because I'm not looking correct. Um, Let's go check it out. So one of the aspects that's confusing, it's looking great. I'm very happy. But these guys, like, how much is keeping them over here? So I'm going to get these up on the thing and work out some strapping for them. Uh, pull that out, pull that down, and that's that. This is, this is this is a journey. Um, okay, uh, I'm not exactly sure. And if you're a Colonial Marine cosplayer, you might be yelling at the screen at this point. I'm just not exactly sure. This this thing just wants to fall right off, even when I have this attached to it. So how do I hold it on? How do I keep it on when it just wants to do that, right? Um, I think that what I'm going to do is do a little attachment, uh, a screw here, and the same right here. Uh, a little button head screw through a larger hole with a T-nut on the back, quarter 20. Yeah, it should be, should be more than enough to just hold it for cosplay and that'll be like the final attachment point before we put these two puppies on. And that should, that should do it. All right, that seems to have worked a treat, although I accidentally glued myself to the inside of my armor for a second. Um, and I want to back this up with a little bit of uh, something stronger, but very much looks like the armor is mostly finished. So I'm going to get this up on the stand. Oh yeah, here, let's get you a better view. Kids, it's a very exciting day because my BDUs showed up. Yes, they did. Uh, these are from an outfit that makes uh, screen accurate BDUs from Aliens. Uh, we I, There's a link in the comments below if you'd like to order a set from them. Uh, they are digitally printed. They're not meant to be tumbled dried. Like they beg you in the instructions, don't ever tumble dry these, drip dry them. 
They're going to weather, like when I wash them, they'll fade a little bit. And so I'll probably wash them two or three times and drip dry them each time to kind of bring their fade in. But yeah. However, it begs the question, where does it end? Where does it end? That's the question. Because this has ballooned way beyond my original, my original metric of the helmet. <laughs> so we're going to leave this video right here. But you can tell that from the timeline. We're going to leave it right here. Uh, the weathering and the scratching will be another pass on this. I recognize some of you probably were pissed off that I didn't figure out that there's a strap that goes from underneath here through here to hold it up on the shoulder. I will get that going. Uh, the strabage of this thing is inordinately complex. There are a lot of moving parts to it. And very few of the tutorials I found online make it really clear how everything lays out inside here. Um, and like, you know, Golden Armor sells a version of armor that's totally, looks fine to me, uh, but their attachment method is different than the original. And it also works fine for that armor. And I think it looks great. It's just not exactly what the, what the real thing had. I may end up doing a drawing, I don't know. But for right now, <laughs> I'm sick of looking at this thing. I'm so happy with how it came out. I recognize this isn't a perfectly screen accurate uh, paint job. Um, I've gotten some texts about colors that I got wrong because I talked about this on a live stream. Um, and uh, there will be further passes on this, getting it more uh, dialed in. But for this video, let's call this helmet video done because yeah, it's gone way past its original charge. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for your patience. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you out there in the field. Cheers, guys. Uh, see you next time.